My name is Vladimir Shilcev. I am director of Accelerator Physics Center at Fermi National Accelerator Laboratory uh, near Chicago in the United States. So uh, I'm leading this center for the past five years. Six years prior to that, I was head of the Tevatron, the largest particle collider in the world at that time. Today I'm going to introduce you my review article recently published in Uspehi, in Physics Uspehi, uh, with the title Particle High Energy Particle Colliders Past 20 Years, Next 20 Years, and Beyond. This picture, taken from the window of my office, shows you accelerators of the past. They are built in the forms of circles or linear accelerators, like Linux. So, and the largest circle on the left is famous Tevatron, which was closed in September 2011. And before that, for many decades, for two decades, it was the largest accelerator in the world. The progress of particle colliders is strongly dependent on the technology. In my article, I go through various technology breakthroughs which made possible current existing particle colliders. Here are some examples of the technology which paved the way. So first one is normal conducting magnets. This is a piece of the current carrying bus uh, used to energize normal conducting or warm magnets. This is a piece of accelerating structure, so-called warm uh, X-band accelerating structure, RF accelerator. Uh, more modern colliders use superconducting magnets. Tevatron, for example, was the first one. LHC, the current record holder, uses su superconductivity as well. So this is a cross-section of the inner part of the superconducting Tevatron magnet. Or next generation particle colliders, like ILC, for example, will use superconducting RF acceleration. So this is a piece of uh, niobium which at low temperatures becomes superconducting and allows very high gradients and very high efficiency acceleration. So, as I said, the technology drives the progress of the colliders and if you look into the past of the colliders, you will see that the energy of the colliders did grow significantly, orders and orders of magnitude over the past decades. But, as one can see, this is time and energy, that the energy of the colliders started to saturate and right now the energy holder is LHC and we don't know in the next decades where the technology will bring us and what kind of colliders will be possible. Why? So why are we so unsure about the future colliders? That's because of the conflicting requirements. Let's take a look at the blackboard. We want next colliders to be very powerful and have energy at least factor of 10 higher than that of the LHC. At the same time, to be economically reasonable, it should have lengths of less than 10 kilometers, power smaller than 10 megawatts in the beams, and the cost of the facility should not exceed $10 billion. There are a number of possibilities which I outline in my review article. That includes dielectric uh, accelerators, accelerators uh, built on plasmas, and accelerators uh, built on crystals. So the last one, acceleration crystals, uh, offers a unique, very fast acceleration possibilities in the uh, crystal structures excited by X-rays. In my article, I also consider various paradigm shifts required for that to happen.